In the first lesson on simple machines, we explored what the different types of simple machines are. We saw some examples of where they're found in our everyday lives, and we got a sneak peek at the mechanical principles that allow them to manipulate force, distance, and speed. In this lesson, we're going to go a bit deeper and take a closer look at how mechanical engineers might use the concepts of work and mechanical advantage to overcome design challenges. We'll talk about efficiency and how it can be quantified and calculated for simple machines. Finally, we'll take a look at compound machines. If you haven't already seen the lesson on level one, you should watch that first. As we've seen, simple machines are used to provide a mechanical advantage. By configuring the simple machine in different ways, we can change the mechanical advantage they provide. An easy example is with a lever. When the effort force is closer to the fulcrum than the resistance force, the mechanical advantage is low. The amount of force needed to lift the load will be greater, but the force will be applied over a shorter distance. By moving the effort force further from the fulcrum than the resistance, we create a higher mechanical advantage. Less force is required to lift the load, but the force must be applied over a greater distance. Mechanical advantage is expressed as a ratio of the magnitude of the resistance and effort forces. It can also be expressed as the ratio between the distance traveled by the effort and resistance forces. One is the magic number. A simple machine with a mechanical advantage of one to one does not change the magnitude of force or the distance required to lift a load. A mechanical advantage greater than one, such as two to one, means less effort force is required over a greater distance. And a mechanical advantage of less than one, such as one to two, means more effort force will be required but over less distance. Mechanical advantage can also be used to manipulate speed. Since the effort and load forces cover their respective distances in the same amount of time, the force traveling farther necessarily travels faster. This is how mechanical advantage is used in something like a baseball bat, a lacrosse stick, or a catapult. Work is done whenever a force is applied over a distance. It's a quantifiable value derived by multiplying the magnitude of the force by the distance traveled parallel to the direction of the force. In the US, Pounds are most commonly used to measure force, and feet are most commonly used to measure distance. So the most common unit for quantifying work is foot-pounds. In the rest of the world, newtons are most commonly used for measuring force, and meters are most commonly used for measuring distance. So the newton meter is the typical unit for measuring work. Simple machines don't actually change the amount of work needed to lift a load or move a resistance force. They simply change the way the work is done. This means that the amount of work performed on the machine is equal to the amount of work performed by the machine. In other words, the work input is always equal to the work output. Since work is equal to force times distance, this formula can be expanded like so. The effort force times the effort distance will be equal to the resistance force times the resistance distance. When we substitute the forces and distances needed to lift a wheelchair user up an inclined plane, we find that with or without the simple machine, 400 foot-pounds of work are required to do the lifting. Without the inclined plane, this would mean exerting 200 pounds of effort force to lift the person two feet straight up in the air. But with the inclined plane, the effort force is reduced to 20 pounds and the effort distance is increased to 20 feet. In this application, the increased mechanical advantage makes the work much easier. Mechanical advantage could be defined as the number of times a machine or a tool multiplies the input force to move a load. It's expressed as a ratio, which could either be the ratio of the effort distance to the resistance distance, or the ratio of the resistance force to the effort force. On paper, the two expressions are identical. For our wheelchair ramp, this means a mechanical advantage of 10 to 1. Our effort force is multiplied 10 times to overcome the resistance force. Determining mechanical advantage on paper is one thing, 
but in real life, simple machines never quite have the mechanical advantage they are supposed to. Their ideal mechanical advantage isn't the same as their actual mechanical advantage. Ideal mechanical advantage, or IMA, of a simple machine is theoretical. It's the mechanical advantage the machine should have. It's calculated using the distances traveled by the effort and resistance forces. So the effort distance over the resistance distance will give you your mechanical advantage. This airplane hoist uses a pulley system to lift an airplane for maintenance. If the motor pulls in 36 feet of cable in order to raise the airplane 6 feet, what is the ideal mechanical advantage of the pulley system? IMA equals the distance moved by the effort over the distance moved by the resistance. In this scenario, the effort distance is 36 feet and the resistance distance is 6 feet. This simplifies to 6 over 1, or an ideal mechanical advantage of 6 to 1. The actual mechanical advantage of a simple machine is the measured ratio. It's the mechanical advantage the device actually has. Actual mechanical advantage, or AMA, accounts for energy that's lost along the way in the form of friction. It's based on the magnitudes of the effort and resistance forces. With the AMA and the IMA, we can calculate the efficiency of a simple machine. The weight of the airplane is 1,700 pounds. If the load on the motor is measured to be 295 pounds, what is the actual mechanical advantage of the pulley system? AMA equals the measured resistance force over the measured effort force. In this scenario, the resistance force is 1,700 pounds and the effort force is 295 pounds. This simplifies to 340 over 59, or an actual mechanical advantage of about 5.76 to 1. The efficiency of a simple machine is the ratio of useful energy output to the total energy input, or the percentage of the work input that is converted to work output. It can be calculated by finding the ratio between the AMA and IMA of a simple machine. If we multiply the result of this ratio by 100, we get the efficiency of the simple machine as a percentage of work input converted to useful work output. An efficiency of 100% would be perfect, but all machines have some amount of energy loss. It's a goal of designers to improve the efficiency of a machine by reducing the number of moving parts and the friction between those moving parts. Let's calculate the efficiency of the airplane hoist in the previous problem. We found the AMA of the hoist to be 5.76 to 1 and the IMA to be 6 to 1. The AMA over the IMA gives us a ratio of 0.96 to 1. When we multiply this by 100, we get the efficiency of the hoist, 96%. So 96% of the work put into the machine was converted into useful work output. If each of these simple machines were used to lift the same box, which one do you think would do it most efficiently? The block and tackle has the most moving parts. There's also significant contact between the rope and pulleys, and between the pulleys and axles. The inclined plane will impose a lot of friction on the box as it slides up the surface. The lever has very few moving parts, and the surface area between moving parts is small resulting in very little friction. In this situation, the lever is likely to be the most efficient option. Tests show that a bicycle can be up to 98.1% efficient in terms of converting energy at the pedals into forward motion. By comparison, typical gas-powered cars have an efficiency close to 20%, with the most efficient still less than 40%. Diesel engines tend to have a better efficiency at around about 40%. As we explore simple machines and the principles that make them work, it's worth taking some time to talk about moments. A moment is the turning effect of a force about a point 
equal to the magnitude of the force times the perpendicular distance from the point to the line of action from the force. So when a force causes an object to want to pivot around a fixed point, we call this a moment. The magnitude of the moment is equal to the magnitude of the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance between the force and the pivot point. This concept is easily mixed up with the concept of torque. Torque is a force that produces or tends to produce rotation or torsion. It's a twisting force. Theoretically, moments and torque are the same concept. They are calculated in the same way using the same units. Their difference is in their practical application. Moment is generally used in situations where the object experiencing the force is fixed and torque is used when the object experiencing the force is allowed to rotate. Moments will become useful when we learn about statics and the way that fixed members of a structure tend to resist forces. Torque will become more useful when we explore gear trains and other types of power transmission. Let's use what we know about moments to calculate the resistance moment of this lever. The resistance force is 12 pounds, and the perpendicular distance from the fulcrum to the line of action of the force is 4.2 feet. This gives us a moment of 50.4 foot-pounds. Rotational equilibrium is the state in which the sum of all of the clockwise moments equals the sum of all of the counterclockwise moments about a pivot point. In other words, moments turning clockwise are equal to the moments turning counterclockwise. This balance results in either a static object that doesn't move, or in the case of an object already in rotation, it will continue to rotate at a constant speed until acted upon by an unbalanced outside force. Using the formula for rotational equilibrium, we can calculate the effort force needed to balance the load. First, we must expand the equilibrium formula by replacing moment with force times distance. Then we can substitute all the known variables and solve for the effort force. In this example, the effort force needed to balance the load is 20.16 pounds. The concept of moments comes into play in all sorts of practical applications. Consider the tower crane. Typical tower cranes can have a maximum height of 265 feet. They can reach out as far as 230 feet. They're capable of lifting as much as 18 metric tons and they carry counterweights weighing 20 tons. These are positively marvelous wonders of engineering, but the basic mechanics behind their operation is easy to understand. A crane like this one has a maximum load moment of 300 ton meters. If the operator positions the load 30 meters from the mast, the crane can lift a maximum of 10.1 tons. As the force of the load increases, the operator must adjust the trolley's distance from the mast in order to keep the load moment under 300 ton meters. Likewise, if the crane must lift a load using the full length of its jib arm, the maximum weight that the crane could lift would correspondingly drop. Balancing the forces of the load and counterweight by adjusting their relative distances from the mast keeps the crane in rotational equilibrium. Because the arms of the crane are designed to remain fixed, we talk about these forces in terms of moments, not torque. Finding the IMA of a pulley system can be done without calculation. In general, the IMA of a pulley system is the number of strands opposing the load. It's not quite accurate to simply count the number of strands, because if the load force is acting downward and one strand of rope is also pulling downward, as we see in this pulley, then that strand is not helping to lift the load and does not contribute to the mechanical advantage. This pulley also has two strands, but in this configuration, both are opposing the load. This gives the pulley an ideal mechanical advantage of two to one. What would be the IMA of this pulley system? This block and tackle has five strands of rope, but the effort strand is pulling in the same direction as the load, so it's not helping to lift the load. 
the other four strands are. So the ideal mechanical advantage of this pulley system would be four to one. This rule about the IMA of a pulley is usually true, except when the strands opposing the load do so at an angle other than 180 degrees. If the strands opposing the load are angled, the force carried by each strand is increased. In this example, the pulley on the left supports the load with two vertical strands. It has an IMA of 2 to 1. The pulley on the right has an IMA less than 2 to 1 because the strands support the load at an angle. Instead of sharing the load equally as on the left, the actual force applied to both strands on the right is higher than 30 pounds. We'll learn how to calculate forces like these when we learn about force vectors. As we learn to calculate mechanical advantage, one simple machine that poses a little extra challenge is the screw. This is because information about the thread pattern of a screw is typically found in a thread note. And if you don't know how to read a thread note, it can be difficult to figure out the screw's mechanical advantage. The formulas for the AMA and IMA of a screw are the same as for the rest of the simple machines, but how do you know what to use as the effort and resistance distances? The effort distance is the circumference of one rotation of the effort arm. If the effort arm is extended by, say, a wrench, then the length of the wrench would become the effort arm distance, and the circumference would increase accordingly. The resistance distance is the linear distance traveled during one rotation of the effort arm also known as the pitch distance. The pitch is the distance from the peak of one screw thread to the peak of the next. To simplify, the IMA formula for a screw is still effort distance over resistance distance, but the effort distance is the circumference of the effort arm and the resistance distance is the screw pitch. In US customary thread notes, the first number tells the diameter of the threaded portion of the fastener. The second number indicates the number of threads per inch. This is different from the pitch. The pitch is the distance between threads, or the linear distance traveled by the screw in one rotation. In this example, the screw would need to be turned 20 times to travel one inch, making the pitch 1 20th of an inch. In metric thread patterns, the pitch is a little easier to find. Metric thread notes start with the letter M for metric, followed by a number. This number is the diameter of the threaded part of the fastener in millimeters. The next number is the thread pitch, also in millimeters. To learn more about thread notes, check out my lesson on reading hole in thread notes. Let's try a practice problem. For this one, we will assume that the bolt is being tightened with an 8-inch wrench. So the length of our effort arm is eight inches. Our thread note indicates a TPI of 18. So our pitch will be 1 18th of an inch. When we crunch the numbers, we find an ideal mechanical advantage of about 897.6 to one. The eight inch wrench definitely helped get it this high but screws can provide incredibly high mechanical advantages. A drawback is they tend to have a very high amount of friction with the material they are connecting with, so their efficiency tends to be low. When simple machines are connected in sequence, they form compound machines. Each simple machine has its own mechanical advantage. The mechanical advantage of the compound machine is the product of each mechanical advantage of the simple machines. In this case, it's the mechanical advantage of the pulley times the mechanical advantage of the lever. The IMA of the pulley is two to one, and the IMA of the lever can be determined by putting the effort distance over the resistance distance, or six over two. Multiplied together, we find the ideal mechanical advantage of the system to be six to one. Try some practice problems with mechanical advantage, efficiency, and static equilibrium. These concepts make more sense the more you work with them. Good luck.